Hey everyone, what's up? Well, today's video, I thought I should go over again the basics of tarantula mating because I'm going to be mating uh, this coming week, which is awesome. Uh, the P. regalis, uh, the Tapakini Sanchi Vincenti, as well as the Honotama Kalkodis that I got from Jason, who's right over here, which I'll be showing you in a bit. What a now, for mature females, this is the, the most flavorful question because I got a lot of people asking me how to tell mature females and the mature males. So, mature males, I'm not going to spend too much time on it because everyone probably knows what a mature male looks like by now. Um, after their maturing stage, you'll notice that males look aesthetically different than the mature females. Um, especially like species like A. calcodes, the pokies. Uh, the Samampoa species, they're totally sexually dimorphic, so you can easily tell a male from a female. Um, in case it does not occur, like, you know, like your Brachypalma species, and the Eupalistra species, and the Lacidora, and Nandu, uh, you have very important features on a mature male. So this is Jason's uh, Phonopalma calcodes I'm going to be demonstrating. Uh, he's right over here. Get it. I'm just going to get an angle so you can see. So you see the tibial hooks on them on the first pair of legs. It's really obvious to see. And you have these swelled up palps, which you can see right over. Where's this palps? This palps are right there. Okay, almost all, every, I mean, every mature male will have all these tibial hooks. Not necessarily tibial hooks. Species like your Hedoscodra, your Stramatopalma, Pocotheria, uh, Plunibius muticus, and the Australian species do not have tibial hooks in there. So what they rely on the hooks is that they hook on the female's fangs, they use the pulpous pedipalps to inject sperm into the Females' epigastric furrow, which locates their spermatheci. So mature males will commonly do a sperm web. Well, they go upside down and they'll charge their sperm by using their pedipalps. You've probably seen this in one of my videos featuring uh, Hans doing it. Okay, so that's pretty much what a mature male is and what you know about him. Now, uh, the most burning question is about mature females. This is why I'm going to write more about it because um, a lot of people have asked me about this. Well, as you know, um, I would consider mature females when they're at their sub-adult to adult stage. So as you know, um, when slings are born, well, no, when tarantulas are generally born, they start off as nymphs, eggs with legs, then they become slings, then juveniles, sub-adults, then adults, and then they die. That's, that's their life cycle. So adults and sub-adults are generally called mature females. Now sizes, they generally will range between the species. Usually the way I see mature males, I mean mature females, is when they're about one and a half to two inches away from full size. So example, um, for a chalk, for a gramosola pulchropes, the chakra golmi, um, the full grown size is around 8 inches, so I would consider between 5 to 8 inches in the maturity, the resexual maturity. For Avix, um, you can look at the 3.5 to 4.5 inches. For Pokies, it's around 5 to 6, and they generally range too. Like, uh, for example, you have uh, Siri Cosmos elegans, which is a really, really small tea, it's around 2 inches. So by one and a half inches, that, that's considered uh, fully mature. Males are actually really small at one inches. And you also notice that the period between molts, uh, between molts are longer. And that's really important to see. It also c determines why I think Charlotte is mature because she last molted around two and a half years ago so by now it starts to get really slow as you notice that slings they tend to molt more often 
the juveniles, they start to slow down. Then as they become their adults and their sub-adults, then they become really slow. And then when you start to get, when you start to notice a pattern that they're really slow in between their molts, that means that it's a mature female. So that's pretty much what you should look in for for females. Also, you'll notice that females are much more stockier built. Um, they're much more colorful, as in the case of some of Poas, um, some of Poas species and Pocothera species. Um, they're generally shorter legged. Not always the case with, with the arboreals. And that's pretty much it. All right, so now the basics of tea mating. Now for tarantula mating, you should always do it in an open area like a bathroom or in a bathtub. Uh, because as soon as the male finishes his job, he's gonna be coming running out of that enclosure, trying to save his life. Because as you know with tarantulas and the myth of um, black widows eating the males, that happens with teeth. For me, I have an experience, well, for, uh, I tell a lie. I had that experience with uh, Medusa eating my poor Alfred, but you, you do have to understand that that happens and it's terribly risky for the female and the male. Well, mostly the male. All right, so what you're gonna need to do is you always leave the female in the enclosure, do not disturb her. So it's very important that the female is freshly molted, like between one to three months in their molten cycle. Anything after that, it's very possible that your tarantula is going to molt out and lose her fertility. And also, you have to keep them well fed. Well fed is very important because you don't want to risk your male from being lunch for the female. So the way to do this is that, especially in 50-50 breeding loans, you always transport the male. The female is just there, sits there, and does, you don't want to disturb it because if you disturb her in any way, she might attack the male, and chances are if she does get a sack, and if you disturb her a lot, like beating her and missing her, she might just end up eating it. All right, so. <laughs> This is the basics of tea mating. I'm not going to go over it too much because um, you're going to see it in practice when I do the pokey matings, the Santi Vincenti, and the Acalcotes. But generally, what you should do is take the mail out. So I recommend buying a cup like this. You can get this from the dollar store for around $2. It's an academia nut jar. You scoop out the mail and you do this with a uh, any other species like your pokey, your H. levinum, but you really got to be careful. And then insert it into the female's cage on the opposite side. And just make sure that you have a big enough enclosure to do this uh, because chances are the male is not going to have much room to run around and he might get eaten. So let's say if you introduce the male into the female's cage. Prod the before he starts drumming, or when he starts drumming, prod the female with a little paintbrush. And see what her attitude's like. If she decides, oh, okay, I'm gonna attack you, that means she's not ready. And you must really take off the male and try again another day. Tarantulas do have mood swings and sometimes they you have you can catch them on a very good day some of them are really bitchy and they have a bad day and when you have a bad day for a tranche for a tea it's really not a good sign and you really should get the mail out of there so mating sometimes generally take a couple of minutes and then for pokies a couple of hours for pokey mating the mating rituals are extremely long so it's very possible that I'm not going to actually get footage of them mating because it takes so many hours. So the best bet is to risk, <laughs> that's the only way to get your pokey mating done, is to put the male into the female's enclosure and pray to God that she doesn't kill him. I usually remove males after a day after I introduce them. And that's pretty much it.
So the gestation periods will vary between species. Um, pokies generally get, and some of poas generally three to six months if mated well, you get a you might get an egg sac. Especially with some poas, you have the possibility of them double clutching. That's sweet if they do. Double clutching means that they lay two egg sacs one after another, not necessarily at the same time. Uh, let's see what else I have to say. I forgot to answer one very important question is when's the best time to mate them and how often you should be mating them. Well for the how often part, a lot of people have different opinions and answers. For what I do and what Tarantula Canada recommends, the more the merrier. If you try to make them more often, you probably have a likelier chance that you have some good insertions and you'll be able to increase the likelihood of getting an egg sac. And the best time to make them is around an hour and a half after dark. So since now we're in November, um, at least in Canada, it starts to get dark around 5 o'clock. So I would say 7 o'clock p.m. to about 10 PM would probably be the best time to mate tarantulas because they're, they're, since they're nocturnal, they'll be able to detect light from dark uh, from their eyes. They will be able to sense it and they'll be much more active and probably much more responsive than what she is. Usually she's really active in the nighttime and the daytime. She's just your typical couch potato. Oh, I also forgot to mention these important items. So you're going to also need a pair of tongs. I recommend getting 10 to 12 inch tongs. Uh, these ones cost $10 at the pet store. And you need a cardboard piece. So I'm using my um, Resident Evil 4 uh, cartridge, which is a fantastic game if you ask me. Anyway, so if you saw Dion's video, Reptalitus, uh, he mated my mature male uh, poker piece with his female, you probably noticed that he was taking his tongs and was going very close to the female. That's a very good thing to do because that helps um, the male from preventing it to getting attacked by the female. So that's what I'm probably going to do with um, this Calcodes because generally uh, with Tarantula Addict has told me uh, a Fonal Palma Calcodes are a little bit aggressive towards the male in their mating so I'm really going to have to supervise and be cautious of um, him not getting killed so that's what I'm going to be doing just just prod her like that oh yeah she's upset just in case something happens and also alternatively you can also have this to block the female from attacking the male if she noticed that she's in attack mode towards a male. You can just put that to separate him. So that's pretty much it, the basics of chi mating. That's all you have to know. So you're going to be seeing this in practice. I'm hoping I'm gonna get some good insertions and good mating attempts. So hope you enjoy this video, everyone, and thanks for watching. And possibly on Thursday or Friday, we make a new Mythbuster video. It's been a while since I last made one, and it's going to cover a new world species, so I'm going to be choosing uh, the Euathlus species and the Parafyza species because they're pretty much uh, similar in care sheet. So, thanks for watching, guys.